Today, in this lecture, we are going to talk about concepts related to tubular reabsorption. What is tubular reabsorption and what is the importance of tubular reabsorption in urine formation? So today, we are going to start a new unit about urine formation by the kidneys, which is related to tubular processing of the glomerular filtrate. The first unit, the first unit of urine formation by the kidneys was related to filtration of the fluid in the Bowman's capsule from the glomerular capillaries into the Bowman's capsule. We have discussed in detail the filtration process and now we are going to discuss in detail stepwise the tubular reabsorption. Now, we have discussed some of the concept which are basically the the basics related to the uh, physiology of the uh, renal system but as we are starting a new unit so I will quickly summarize and quickly revise those uh, concepts which are important to understand the urine formation and a tubular reabsorption. Basically the human kidney is made of thousands of nephrons and the purpose of the nephrons is the formation of urine after processing the fluid that enter the nephrons. So we have the kidney the kidney basically is made of thousands of nephrons which are basically uh, present in uh, these pyramid structures these pyramid structures they are present in the renal medulla and they're uh, and at the border of the renal cortex the nephrons in the pyramids they are basically processing the fluid one nephron will look like this but thousands of nephrons they uh, basically form the renal uh, pyramids now they process the fluid and make the urine the urine then enters the uh, minor calyces and the major calyces and then the ureter and then into the urinary bladder but what exactly happens inside the nephron so the first step in the urine formation is the filtration of the fluid and the filtration occurs mostly at the Bowman's capsule. The Bowman's capsule when the blood that enters into the glomerular capillaries is uh, filtered and the filtrate then start moving into the nephron, different parts of the nephron. Initially the filtrate moves through the proximal tubule of the nephron, then the loop of Hanley or loop of Hanel, then the distal, uh, uh, distal tubule, then the collecting tubules and the collecting ducts and finally into the ureter. During this process, during the process of filtration and the process of uh, urine formation, a lot of steps are occurring. Now, the first step was the filtration and we have discussed filtration in very much detail and you must watch those uh, videos, those lectures about the filtration, the, what is filtration and what, what are the different factors which affect the filtration. The factors which increase filtration, the factors which decrease filtration process, each and everything has been discussed fully. So now, after filtration, another important step is the reabsorption. So basically, when the fluids start moving through the proximal tubule, a lot of substances that get filtered into the Bowman's capsule, when they start moving through the proximal tubule, they are reabsorbed into the blood, into the peritubular capillaries. Now, if we simplify the nephron, it becomes, uh, this diagram will become like this one, this diagram. Here the blood enters the Bowman's, into the glomerular capillaries and the filtration starts into the Bowman's capsule, the filtrate then moves into the uh, nephron tubule. Now we have enlarged this area and we have also simplified this area. Once the filtration process has occurred, the next step is the tubular reabsorption. The tubular reabsorption, uh, reabsorption is as important as tubular filtration and what happens in the tubular reabsorption is that a lot of substances which basically entered in the proximal tubule here we have the proximal tubule, they start getting reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. Now these are the peritubular capillaries and basically peritubular capillaries are surrounding the proximal tubule, the loop of, loop of Henley in the distal tubule. So a lot of substances get reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries and some of the substances are even secreted from the capillaries. Some of the substances are even secreted from tubu uh, peritubular capillaries into the tubules. Now overall, the urine excretion is basically, the urine excretion is basically glomerular filtration minus tubular reabsorption plus tubular secretion. So first of all, in the urine exc excretion process, filtration occurs, filtration occurs, then reabsorption occur, filtrate enters into the tubule, then reabsorption occur. A lot of filtrate, a lot of substances from the filtrate are reabsorbed. And finally, some of the substances are secreted from the peritubular capillaries into the tubule. So overall, the urine excretion is equal to filtration minus reabsorption plus tubular secretion. Because once a filtrate has entered, for example, this much filtrate has entered into the tubule and this much is reabsorbed. So, and this much is, for example, and this much is secreted. So overall, we will have to subtract this much amount from this filtration. And then at the end, we will have to add this one to the filtration. So overall, we will get the figure of urine excretion. So urine excretion rate is basically filtration minus tubular reabsorption plus tubular secretion. And how the filtration of different substances occur. There are a lot of substances in the blood that is being filtered into the glomerular capillaries. For example, there is glucose, there is bicarbonate, there is sodium, chloride, potassium, urea, and creatinine. 
Now, some of the substances will get filtered easily. Some of them will not get filtered easily depending upon the um, uh, biochemical structure of those substances. But what exactly is the filtration rate? What is the, the filtration rate of substances, of the different substances? So the simple equation to calculate the filtration or the glomerular filtration of any substance is glomerular filtration rate, glomerular filtration rate, which is around 125 ml per minute or 180 liters per day into plasma concentration of that substance, especially if that substance is freely filtered. So the filtration of any substance, glucose, bicarb, sodium, chloride, potassium will be filtration uh, will be basically the GFR, the filtration rate into the plasma concentration of that thing. Now, once the filtration process has occurred, then the tubular reabsorption will start. And tubular reabsorption is very, very important. Tubular reabsorption is very, very important. Suppose, for example, when filtration starts, 180 gram of glucose is filtered per day. 180 grams per day of glucose is filtered from the glomerular capillaries into the uh, Bowman's capsule and out of 180 grams of glucose per day, 180 is reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries and zero glucose is excreted in urine. So here we know that glomerular filtration is 180 and tubular reabsorption is also 180 and tubular secretion is 0, so 180 minus 180 is 0 plus 0, so urine excretion normally, urine excretion of glucose normally will be 0, there will be 0 glucose or no glucose in the urine normally. Now we see that the filtration of substances is important, but reabsorption is also important. Now see, uh, we don't know, we are not uh, normally aware of what our kidneys are doing. We must be thankful to the kidney because this, the kidneys are um, regulating these substances at the molecular level so accurately. See, 180 grams of glucose is being filtered per day, per day and out of that 180 gram, almost each and every molecule of glucose is reabsorbed and zero glucose normally appear in urine. Normally, it is important to mention normally because pathologies do exist and we are not going to discuss those pathologies, those diseases in which glucose will be excreted in urine. <clears throat> now, the filtration is de determined with this equation and this equation basically assume that the glucose is freely filtered. It is freely filtered. It is not being stopped at any level, at any membrane, at this membrane or this membrane or at any level. So, the, so calculating the filtration rate, the glomerular filtration of any substance which is freely filtered is very easy. If we have the plasma concentration of substance and the uh, glomerular filtration rate, then it is easy to calculate the uh, filtration. For example, if the plasma concentration of glucose is 1 gram and the glomerular filtration is 180, 180 liters per day, so 180 into 1 is 180 gram per day. If the plasma concentration, if the concentration of glucose in blood is 1 gram, is 1 gram, and the filtration, the filtration, the GFR is 180 liter per day. So the filtration of glucose per day will be 180 into 1 gram. It will be 180 gram per day. And its reabsorption is also 180. So zero glucose is excreted in the urine. Coming to bicarbonate. Now the amount of bicarbonate filtered is 4,320 milli equivalent per day. Out of this 4,320, 4,318 is reabsorbed into the blood and only 2 milli equivalent or very very small amount of bicarb is normally excreted in urine. A very small, a very minimal amount of bicarb is excreted. So glucose and bicarb are almost equally or fully reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. Now coming towards the sodium, here we have around 25,560 milli equivalent per day filtered and around 25,410 reabsorbed and around 150 milli equivalent of sodium excreted into the urine. So a small amount of urine is, uh, sodium is excreted in urine. Similarly, chloride around this much is filtered and this much is reabsorbed into the blood and this much goes into the urine. Same goes for potassium, 756 is filtered, 654 reabsorbed, 92 go into the urine. Now when we look at the urea and creatinine, here we will see the importance of reabsorption. Here we will see the importance of reabsorption and at this point we will realize that how in, how intelligent the nephrons and how intelligent the kidneys are that how intelligently they are basically reabsorb, reabsorbing the glucose, bicarb, sodium, etc. the important substances and they are allowing the urea and creatinine to go out of the body. So around 46.8 gram per day of urea is filtered here. Out of that 46.823 is reabsorbed and 23.4 gram per day is allowed to go in the urine. Now this is around 50%. 
here zero percent of glucose was allowed to go into the urine here only a very small amount of bicarb was allowed to go in urine similarly sodium a very small amount of sodium was allowed to go into the urine but around 50 percent of urea is allowed or is excreted into the urine and when it comes to creatinine 1.8 gram per day is filtered and zero is reabsorbed and almost all the filtered creatinine goes into the urine or is excreted into the urine so the first step in the tubular processing the tubular reabsorption is very very important in determining what substance has to be reabsorbed and what has to be uh, excreted in the urine now some of the substances like glucose will be completely absorbed it will be completely absorbed some of the substances like sodium chloride potassium etc their reabsorption in the peritubular capillaries depends upon the level of sodium chloride potassium in the blood if the amount in the body in the blood is low then their reabsorption increases but if the amount of sodium chloride and potassium in the blood decreases then if the amount is normal then the excretion is normal but if the amount of these electrolytes in the body decreases then the reabsorption increases and the excretion of these substances in urine is not allowed they are not excreted when they are needed in the body and there are some substances like urea and creatinine which are excreted normally in the body from in the urine and they are not kept in the body so the reabsorption process the tubular reabsorption process is a very intelligent process and this process is basically helping the human body to maintain the good substances which are needed and to remove the waste material and similarly this reabsorption process is intelligent enough to determine that whether the amount of electrolytes in the body are needed or not if they are needed they are conserved if they are not needed they are excreted in urine so tubular reabsorption is very much important and the reabsorption of each and every electrolyte is different and it is also different in different circumstances and reabsorption is not a small process and the amount of fluid and ions reabsorbed is not a small amount it is a very big amount it is a very big number and it is very much needed to determine the ions and electrolytes in the body to keep their levels normal now why these substances are uh, in the first hand filtered if they are going to be reabsorbed for example if the glucose is fully reabsorbed why in first place it is basically filtered so the the answer is the kidneys are very really, uh, trying to keep each and every uh, thing in check they are trying to maintain the levels and so each and every uh, substance is repeatedly filtered and that filtration is very much important and that's why some of the substances which are even needed in the body they are initially filtered but when the, the reabsorption process determine that this substance is needed in the body it is conserved and this concept will be explained uh, when uh, we discuss further topics in uh, tubular process of the glomerular filtrate thanks a lot for watching the video